So today I'm going to show you how to receive medication onto your sterile field. Now, as surgical technologists, we play a critical role in ensuring that the six rights of medication administration are met. And that means we're both checking the medication label and expiration date, and we're creating our label and labeling it on our sterile field. To confirm that we have the correct medication, we must verify it with the circulator at three different times throughout the process. The first check happens before we open our back table pack. You and the circulator together verify that the gathered medications match what is on the surgeon's preference card and that none of the medications have expired. Lidocaine 1% with epinephrine 1 to 100,000, expiration September of 2024. Very good. The second check happens just before the medication is delivered onto your field. The circulator will present the medication and the two of you together will look at the label while one of you reads it out loud. I have your medication, lidocaine 1%, with epinephrine 1 to 100,000, expiration September of 2024. Very good. Now it's time to transfer the medication. Most medications come in a vial. Inside the vial is sterile and your field is sterile. Now in many clinical sites you'll see a transfer like this. The circulator opens the top of the vial and pours it into your medicine cup. But you see the problem with this. The outside of the vial is not sterile, and her hand is not sterile, and yet they are over or almost over your sterile field. This is not allowed. There are three approved methods for transferring medication from a vial sterilely. The first method uses a vial decanter to make the transfer. Each end of the new vial decanter is covered by a cap maintaining its sterility. The circulator will pop the top of the vial, wipe the top with an alcohol pad, Remove the cap from the pointy end of the decanter, and without touching the pointy end, insert it through the rubber stopper. She will then remove the other cap, place only this sterile tip over your medicine cup, and pour in the medicine. To be extra sure, the tip of the decanter should never touch the medicine cup. For the second method, the circulator will draw up the medication into a sterile syringe, and then eject the medicine into your cup. Only the sterile needle may pass over your medicine cup. The third method is a little more interesting. In this case, you will draw the medication from the vial that the circulator is holding. Like before, the circulator will remove the cap and wipe the top of the vial with an alcohol pad. You will place a large bore needle, like an 18-gauge needle, onto your syringe. This large needle makes drawing up medications easier. You will remove the cap, Pull the plunger back about halfway and hold the syringe in a slightly upward direction. You do not approach your circulator with the needle, you hold it perfectly still. Because this can be slightly dangerous to her, she is the one who is in control. She is the one doing the moving. Your circulator will then place the vial over the needle. Position the needle so that the tip is near the neck of the vial. Press the plunger to inject some air into the vial, and then draw the medication into your syringe. Once back at your table, remove the large bore needle with a pair of needle drivers and place it in the foam of your needle counter. Then attach a small bore needle, like a 24 or 25 gauge, for injecting into the patient. We try to be nice that way. But sometimes the medication may come in an ampule. With an ampule, the medication is completely encased in glass. There is no lid. To open it, the circulator will snap the tip of the ampule. And when this happens, there's a chance that small pieces of glass could end up in the medicine. So to protect our patient, we use a filter needle to filter out any glass. Again, we hold the needle still, and the circulator will place the ampule over the needle. Drawing from an ampule is slightly different in that we don't inject air first. We simply start drawing up the medication. Once back at our table, we replace the filter needle with a small hypo needle. No matter which method you use, once the medication is on your field, you immediately label any container that may hold that medication. This usually means making two labels, one for your medicine cup and one for your syringe. You will use the black tip of your pen to write your labels. The purple ink tends to smear easily and that defeats the purpose of the label. You will write the name of the medication and the strength. If there is epi, you will write that as well. 
You only need to include an expiration date on the label if the medication may not be used within 24 hours. And since I really hope this carpal tunnel takes less than 24 hours, I'm not going to write an expiration date. Once the medication is labeled, it's time for the third check. The circulator will again hold up the medication and the two of you will again look at the label with one of you reading it out loud. Lidocaine 1% with epinephrine 1 to 100,000, expiration date 9-2024. Now there's one more key step to transferring medications. You need to make sure that your doctor knows exactly what it is she's injecting. So whenever you hand medication to her, you're going to state the name of the medication, the strength, and whether or not it has epinephrine. Local. 1% lidocaine with epi. When the doc is done, she will place the needle on your mayo stand. Needle down. Now. You never, ever recap a needle. Now let me show you how to recap a needle. You're not going to just place the cap back on the needle. This is super dangerous and many people have been stuck doing exactly this. Instead, you have two options. The first option, place the cap in your needle book. Insert the needle, turn it vertically and press down until it snaps. Option two, with the cap laying on your mayo stand, Scoop the cap onto the end of your needle. Then use the fingers of the same hand, not your other hand, to snap the cap in place. This way your fingers are never near the tip of the needle. So that's how we transfer medication onto our sterile field.